All right, here's our first game against Falk. And uh, he's chosen to be Essence. Your end draws near. Running our Astro Gambit deck. Opening hand is promising. I have a circle of life to do my combo with Astro. Uh, don't have a lot of early two drops, but I top decked uh, early two drops, so that was nice. I play my circle of life early, which could be uh, risky if he knows that that's a key component to my Astro combo. So if you destroy that and I don't have my other circle of life, I'm in trouble. Because then I'm not going to be drawing cards. Alright, so he plays his push guy. I respawn the starfish. And then I believe the way his deck works is he will try to get me into the danger zone and then use spells to finish me off. So by using shift and um, the golems that fly to chip away at my health. All right, so we play the bloater in the lane with the flower unit. We did uh, stumble across our burning temple, which is nice. And that's a really good fort if you get it early. Definitely helps bring out your champion quite early, especially in the type of deck I'm playing, because I'm playing a lot of survivability cards. He uh, slaps me in the face for three. So I'm down to 12 health. Play Burning Temple, I trade in a mana. Play Infested. So do, we do have a Sigil in our hand. I have a Transference as well, so not too worried about getting rushed down. Plays a mana dagger. I really like reference library for for essence because then your daggers cost zero. Uh, it's a really good combination. And the strategy I like to do with uh, spells with essence is play reference library and then play a whole bunch of spells, cheap spells. That way, even if my fort gets removed, I got some value out of it. Uh, play Grizzly Mac in the far right lane against his push unit, which I'll take advantage of more card draw. Because when it battles uh, the push robot, I'll go back and trigger my Grizzly Mac ability. Plays a Griffin. Now, that is the big boy there. That's what I have to worry about. But uh, I do have some removal for it, so I'm not too worried. And we're going to sigil, I believe, the bloater? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm more... I'm scared about the griffin. I want... Um, so now, yeah, that's a 4-7. Drifting silence. That's going to be hard to remove. With, like, just damage. Almost... That's where uh, spells like Mana Feedback, Death Siphon work really nice because it doesn't matter how big your unit gets, uh, it'll just delete it. So I think, you know, this is looking pretty good. I've, uh, with Astro, Gambit deck, you always want to have a big hand size because uh, you want to be having a hand size at 5 or greater 5 hand size when you play Astro he gets to 10 health and then your cosmic or your your spell card that eats up a starling and, and does power damage to stronghold usually your, your soul void is 5 so 10 plus 5 is 15 so 
that's kind of like the golden ticket, really. So yeah, I got. I think my hand size is like eight right now, nine, or is it is it ten right now? It's one thing I wish they had a a counter for your hand size. They don't. You do have a counter for your deck size, but not. Uh, so we play our cosmic rays, which uh, deletes the griffin in in my starling lane. And then we are going to go balls to the wall with Astro. And this is looking pretty good. I don't uh, have a, I have two rushes in my deck and two trailblazers. Trailblazers is the sprint. So I have a good chance to get rush and sprint here with uh, a full ca there's the sprint trailblazer. Do we get the rush? Depleted. No, second trailblazer. All right, so we didn't get the rush, but uh, we are in position to sprint next turn, and he just has a one-one golem uh, as a blocker. So the clock is ticking, and we have removal. But we need to find. Oh yeah, we do have the um, the spell that eats up my starling. So. Basically, I have the combo. I, the only thing that's going to stop me is the 1-1 one, one Golem, but I have an answer for, for that. Let's have a look -see. And this is what makes this deck kind of really dangerous, is if you don't put enough early pressure, and, and again, I always say this, like combo decks are the scariest if you're not too aggressive. So we do the sprint damage, and then we I forget what that spell card is called, but um, basically it just eats up the starling and flings the power at the stronghold. Uh, so that was a good game, good game, Falk. Going into the next game. All right, so we're going into another game against Stangvert. A very good, uh, very high top tier player in Dragonfront. Uh, he's playing Strife, and I gotta be on my A game. So again, uh, when I'm piloting this deck, uh, it's basically gotta get mana, gotta draw cards, and I gotta keep him at bay until I'm ready to combo and, and one turn kill him. Other thing uh, to note is like pay, uh, I pay attention to my two trailblazing and two rush spells because that uh, if I draw all four of them uh, it, in the game before I bring out Astro, then I don't have that surprise uh, rush or sprint. So that's one thing to note. Um, so the earlier you can get Astro out with a big hand size, the better. Uh, cause if you wait too long, uh, you might not draw, uh, you might draw your rush card or your spring card before Astro comes out. And then the secondly, if you don't bring him out before 10, uh, a deck size of 10, you'll, you might exhaust, uh, your deck and, uh, yeah, so not a good thing to do. So... Uh, I guess the counter to the Astro Gambit deck, like I've always said, is um, just uh, try to put a lot of pressure. Uh, try to, ch you know, in certain lanes, see if you can do quite a bit of damage and just keep putting the pressure. Try to uh, stop, like, card draw and um, just anything you can kind of do. I'm not really, in this type of deck, I don't have any fort removal. Uh, that might change if uh, the meta gets really nasty with forts, but uh, because this combo deck is really... So, th another thing like combo decks, uh, they're almost like... I wouldn't say like single player, but it's almost like you're playing solitary a little bit uh, for the combo part because it's like the combo will work on pretty much anybody. Uh, but there are, there are some counters like... Um, uh, you know, if you play Drain, the Blight decks, uh, super aggro decks, if, um, 
we get more cards released, there's potentially mill decks that mess up your, your deck and make you overdraw cards. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, I think right now, especially in the, er the early days of this game re-release, uh, the combo decks are extremely strong. Uh, my anima deck and uh, now Ash the Astro deck. Definitely, I'm definitely winning a lot of games. And, I mean, a lot of players are trying to counter it, but um, I think, too, not ever you know, not everybody has all the cards unlocked. But, yeah, so Stanger, uh, uh, Stanver is doing a good job with his uh, range 4-2. Uh, if he can keep hitting me like that, I, and if, if I don't have blockers, then I'm in trouble. The thing about this deck is pretty good. It has a lot of card draw. And the more you play with combo decks, the better you'll get. Uh, but I would say is when you first start trying to play combo decks, don't expect to quickly win. In fact, you'll probably lose quite a, quite a few games. But once you get the hang of it, uh, yeah, combo decks are very strong. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to put tokens into Astro and kind of get myself ready. I do like to get a Starling down, such as a Soul Void. Uh, because it, when I draw my obligation or obliteration, sorry, uh, I can, I have a Starling on the play area to target when I play Astro and I draw some more cards. So at this point, I could get, I could play Astro, but I want to get a Starling, a Starling down basically. Because I only have three in my deck, and right now I actually have all three in my hand. So I need to get at least one of them down and to survive and then bring Astro, because then uh, Obliteration I can then play, because I haven't, I don't have Obliteration in my hand. So that was unfortunate. Uh, he has, I think it's um, a spell card that will do two random damage in my area. And it hit my um, soul void, so now it's a 5 4 versus his uh, 4 4 unit. So it's gonna die. So I, I need to get another Starling down before I bring out Astro. And I got my two rushes there, which is pretty sucky. Because now I don't have the element of rush when I bring Astro down, but I still have Sprint in my deck. Alright, so we got our Circle Life out. We are going to bring out Astro. Uh, so we will get a Sprint, but we don't have the rush. So we're, we're going to have to get some removal here because uh, he's got that 2-2... Two -two. That's going to try to uh, block me, probably. And we got the obliteration, and we got the sprint. So, the roadblock is that 2-2 two -two that's in the left lane. Your deck is almost completely and there we go, we got a removal spell card. So he does a really good job here. Uh, I mean, he knows what's what's cooking, basically. Uh, he dropped a Breach, put a Slime down even. Because even, you know, if I remove the Breach uh, and then I kill his other guy, he's going to move the Slime, uh, which will, you know, it's going to respawn. So another blocker. So we're going to mana feed back his uh, Breach Death Blow unit. And my Soul Void took a lot of damage there. 
And then I am going to, I think I just move forward here. So here's the thing, I play Lunatic, my hope is I get the slime one time, which RNG smiled upon me, got it. So now, if he moves that slime up, it's going to get destroyed and it's not going to respawn and block me, which if that would have happened, he would have won, uh, would have won the game because I'm basically out of my deck at this point. I have no more removal. Uh, so. My only, uh, his only hope or is, yeah, does he have a spell that can do four damage or does he have a flying unit? And he only has four cards in hand, so he does not. And we're gonna obliteration our soul void for the finishing damage. Good game. Victory. Delirium versus Strife! Alright, so game number two against Stingvert. So now he knows, uh, he sort of got a taste of my Astro Gambit deck. So I assume he'll be a little bit more wiser. But again, combo decks are hard to deal with because most of it is the player just trying to get the combo in, in their hand or, or set up properly. So when you're playing against it, what do you do, right? Um, well, you just try to th th make it, try to throw off your uh, your opponent. Let's have a look, see. Found something. And I think like the best way to do it is is out pressure, make it so that hey, you're gonna die before you even get your combo off. So, play that some. Found something. That's where deck building and, you know, figuring out different cards, what to do. So we lucked out here. We got a burn temple. We trade with uh, the battle surveyor. And surprised because I think he actually put the battle surveyor, uh, battle surveyor in the lane I have my unit in. And um, usually you don't want to do that uh, because now instead of killing the bell, um, battle surveyor in two turns, usually uh, if it's not put in the same lane as a unit, it's now one turn. Um, so we put a bloater in the lane with um, Burning Temple. And we have a mana feedback in hand, so we can actually do a quite cheeky combo here. Uh, we can mana feedback and then benefit from Burn Temple on the left side. Uh, we play our Shade Geometer. So you have two survivable uh, survivor units out. Uh, now, the dragon uh, for Stripe is, is quite uh, scary because that thing can get really high in power just by, you know, killing units. And it has flying. Its weakness is it only has three health. So we're going to get, like, mega to tokens out of this. Because the Chum Creep... Uh, Chum Creep... Uh, Chum Creep... Per also gains tokens from being damaged. So I like his strategy, like he puts a binding spell in uh, the spawn lane, and that was nice. That was, just comes in, deletes two units there. So already this uh, dragon is quite high power flying unit. Um, but again, uh, I have a removal for it, so plus a heal. Now normally, uh, I like to use my transference once I've taken some damage. I think right now I've taken no damage, so I think at this point I'm like questioning, should I just, you know, take six? But then I'm thinking, oh, six is a lot of damage to take. So we ended up using that. So I have a pretty big hand size. I, I do have the obliteration in my hand, so I need to get a, 
a starling down and then obliterate it and then bring out uh, Mr. Astro. Alright, so now, uh, yeah, big boy's coming out of tank. It's about time. So we got our Starling out. Now here's an uh, interesting point here. Like, so if he if he hits me, right? Okay. It it's it's gonna bring Astro out. Like I'm I'm getting to that threshold of, you know, I can just spend a little bit and I can then bring him out so I don't know at that position mate like sometimes it's dangerous to hit the stronghold because like you know you're just helping me get Astro out quicker Brothers, I am here. so sometimes it's best to try to line up like a big killing blow on a turn where you do like maybe eight nine damage okay we sigil bloater we obliterate so we did the five now we play our Circle Life, and we play Mr. Astro, and I should have maybe a Sprint and a Rush still left in my deck. I don't know. Let's see. Because in my hand currently, I have one one of each, so I should have... Yep, there's the Rush. And then I just gotta draw into the Sprint. So... Try the starfish. Do we get the sprint? No. All right. So we're just gonna rush then. So, um. Doing this strategy is a little more difficult against Strife because they have uh, Breach. Uh, so, yeah, so he's gonna Breach with the Goblin. So, can he stop Astro? So I need, like, I have two Lunatics, but obviously, okay, there, we got the de Death Siphon. Uh, that's enough to uh, get in there and do the killing blow. Alright, that's another game, so good game for Stanker. Alright, so our final game here, this is against Norm Wilson, playing Strife. And I play a lot of Strife uh, in the rank. I think that is... Uh, the player's favorite right now. To I mean, I'm not complaining. I play a lot of Essence and Delirium, so I'm sure people are getting fed up playing <laughs> against me with those factions. But what's funny is I'm playing uh, Delirium and I'm not doing a drain strategy, which uh, they're kind of known for their, their drain decks. The Astro deck is uh, a lot like Anima, uh, but just like a, a kind of a different version and, and more RNG, basically. Now, Norm Wilson does not like Lunatics. As you see, he's got his units all have three health. He's died to too many Lunatics. So he does play a 3-1. So I'm thinking, should I play the bloater? And I do. So now if I do play Lunatic, I have a chance of taking out the goblin or maybe hitting my bloater. Then he plays a Shade Thaumaturge, which is kind of bad if I ping his uh, Shade Thaumaturge. Play another bloater. I will comply. 
Miss me for one. Place a four cost uh, Merc card, I guess it's called. Uh, pretty good stats, four power, five health, but that doesn't have any unique abilities. Uh, we pay, pay, ping both our bloaters, so that was nice. Trade with the goblin, get another mana. And play Grizzle. So, why is he gonna play here? You know? So that was a weird, uh, yeah, I wondered about that play, because I'm like, wouldn't it be better to save your spell card uh, for when you get close to maybe doing the final damage on me, you know, like, but just to, so I, I'm a firm believer of, like, kind of holding your tricksy stuff to when it's really important for his 1-3 um, to hit me for one damage. Uh, I don't know, I felt that was um, a weird play, but... Your service. So I'm pushing on the right, he's pushing on the left. I have a transference, so I can kind of take some damage here. But I'll be taking five. And plays another foe shard. <laughs> Mixed reality, it's wonderful. Oh, mana feedback comes online. And we're taking advantage of Burn Temple. So things are looking good, big hand size. We have a lot of options here. We mana feedback. The big guy. We're got like a full hand here. We will transfer it and heal up. So now he's probably thinking, darn it. <laughs> yeah, this is looking fairly good for me. Damn, I drew uh, a trailblaze. But I still have one more rush and one more trailblaze in my deck, so. We're gonna do the combo next turn. Probably could have did it. Honestly, I could have did the combo that turn, but. For whatever reason, I just chose to wait a turn. So he's down at 14 health, which means if I combo at 9 cards, uh, Astro will be 14 power. Uh, just one da damage to everything here. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so all my cards are gone, but I'm ready to rock and roll here with Astro. And I know uh, that I have uh, the Sprint and the Rush in my deck still, so I play them down. And I think I'm drawing, discarding nine and drawing nine, so I'll probably get the Sprint and Rush here. Because I think I only have like 11 cards left. There's the rush. Your deck is almost completely Just need the sprint. And we got the sprint. Alright, so this is kind of like a textbook Astro Gambit 
maneuver here. And what makes it so hard is, uh, you know, it's hard to uh, defeat that fight. Put pressure, and uh, you might be able to beat out the combo. Thanks, guys, for watching. I will see you on the battlefield.